Is there anybody who knows that God is in control? No matter what the situation may seem like, no matter what the doctors say, what the lawyers may say, how many know that God is still in control? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come now to say thank you. Lord, I thank you for last night's laying down and this morning's rising. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come into your house of worship just one more time. Lord, I thank you for this preaching opportunity. Hide me behind the cross that your people may see you and not me. Not by my power, not by my strength, but by your spirit, oh God. I pray that you would have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. To my pastor, to my brothers in the ministry, these other ministers, these preachers here, deacons, deaconess, and all of you, my new Mount Zion family. If you have your Bibles with you this evening, join me in the New Testament book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll begin reading at verse 10 to verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. If you have that, say amen. amen. If you need more time, say hold up, wait a minute. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. And it says, finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord yes, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. For just a few moments this evening, I want to preach from the subject, a prepared soldier in the Lord's army. As we prepare to leave 2022 behind, and embark on 2023, we often take a moment to reflect on how life may have changed for the better, maybe even for the worse. We've all experienced something or some things that we weren't prepared for. Going into the new year, I can't tell you everything that's going to be in store for you, but if you are a child of God, there is one thing we can make sure that we can always be prepared for. For every believer in Christ, we are faced with the battles of warfare. It's not a hand-to-hand -hand combat, yet it's a battle with Satan trying to keep us away from the truth of God. This is what we know as spiritual warfare. The moment we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our enemy declared war on our lives, trying to deceive us. The spoiler alert is, we've already been granted victory through Jesus. However, we must still go into battle. In our text today, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and as he's ending this message, he leaves a note on how to endure during spiritual warfare and how to be a prepared soldier in the Lord's army. If we are going to be prepared soldiers in the Lord's army, the first point I want to look at this evening is that we must find our strength in the Lord. Look at the words of Paul. He encourages his reader to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Before a soldier can begin to think about combat, he or she must show some form of strength. A lot of times when we think of the word strength, we think of physical strength and how much we can lift or carry. 
When it comes to mental strength, we want to know how long you can effectively deal with stressors, pressures, and challenges and still be able to perform at the best of your ability. With physical and mental strength, you are solely relying on your behavior and toughness to be able to get through. However, when it comes to spiritual strength, it's not about how much you can perform and endure alone, but instead how much we are trusting in the almighty, all-knowing, and all-power of our God. We have to learn to take a back seat and understand that this battle isn't a battle we can win on our own, nor were we designed to fight it alone. The encouragement that Paul is leaving us at the end of this letter is that when we face spiritual warfare, we can find power and strength for battle through God and his word. Paul says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We can trust God not just because of his strength, but also because of his ability and the dominion or control of his power. You know the scripture, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Or how about this one, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. We can trust his power because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That means he's got all power. And what I found out is with that same power, when I'm weak, if I lean and trust and depend on him, his strength is made perfect in my time of weakness. When I don't feel like pressing on, he lifts up my bowed down head. I know that when I feel defeated, I need the help and I need his help. And the Bible tells me that I can lift my eyes up to the hills from where my help comes from. Why? Because it comes from the Lord. We have to be able to find our strength in the Lord because the Bible says we have to be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. The next point that I want to look at tonight for being a prepared soldier in the Lord's army, you have to know your enemy. In sports, a head coach spends time scouting opponents and making game film to look for and expose any weaknesses and tendencies in their opponent. Sometimes they may adjust the playbook accordingly so that it will help their team get the victory in the next matchup. As children of God, we have been given a scouting report and a playbook on how to defeat our enemy and it has not changed. In combat, you have to know your opponent's landscape and tactics in order to be able to set up a game plan to ensure victory. In carnal wartime, there is usually a time of peace or no immediate fights going on. But in spiritual warfare, it's a constant, nonstop battle until the Lord calls us home. To know your enemy is to know that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And what Paul says to the readers is for this one, you have to put on the whole armor of God. Because this joker here, he's scheming. He's a, he's a scheming, tricky devil. He's a liar, the father of all lies. He's the tempter. He's the ruler and God of this world. But his access is limited. To know your enemy is to know that he wants to play tricks on your mind and make you think the word of God is a lie. Yeah. To know your enemy is to know that he knows the word of God and knows how to manipulate it and make you question it. Look at what he did at, to Eve. The first thing he asked her in the garden was, did God really say? He knew that if he could just get her to question what the truth was, he could cause mankind to sin against and doubt the words of God. To know your enemy is to know that when he wants to trick you, he won't give you anything that you don't like. 
He's going to give you everything your flesh wants and knows that you shouldn't have. To know your enemy is to know that he isn't omniscient or omnipresent and that the devil isn't the only enemy that we face in spiritual warfare. Look at the text. The scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's levels to this, y'all. In Revelation 12, John paints the picture of a war in heaven and describes a dragon, the devil, which was cast out of heaven and took along a third of the stars of heaven, which would be the other angels that believe Satan's lies. Too many times we give Satan too much credit for distracting us. Again, Satan only has limited access and needs permission to touch you. And the more we get distracted, the more we lose that everyday fight between good and evil and against life and death. But to know your enemy is to know that if you resist him, he will flee. Have you ever been around a toddler or a young child who desires attention? What do they do? They find ways to distract you, to get your mind off what you're already doing. And the majority of the time, if you just ignore and resist them, they move on. It's no different with Satan. He desires to distract us and wants us to lose and die in our sins. But to know your enemy is to know that he's already been defeated. He was defeated by the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. And because we have the victory through Jesus, in verse 13, Paul tells us to simply stand. The last point that I want to look at this evening in being a prepared soldier in the Lord's army is that we need to gear up and stand. Look at verse 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all, stand. A prepared soldier is always ready for battle. In war, if you have to spend time getting ready while the enemy is attacking, you're already too late. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. In spiritual warfare, if all you're doing is getting equipped on Sundays and Wednesdays, you're already losing. And the evil day simply means any given day. Which is why, which is why, which is why, if we want to endure, we need to make sure we are strengthened and covered daily. And once you have been equipped with and now have on the full armor, Paul says to stand. Not attack, not try to figure it out on your own, but to stand. Not to complain about everything or sit in sorrow, but stand. If we cover ourselves and stand firm on God's word, we can stand still and know that God will fight our battles. Can I give you some examples very quickly? When the children of Israel escaped Egypt, they were stuck at the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his army were gaining ground on them. Moses told them to fear not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Those Egyptians who you see, you won't see them again because God parted the Red Sea for Israel and used the same water to drown Pharaoh's army. In 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat was approached by the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Menuhites for battle. The Lord told him to tell the people, you don't need to fight this battle. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. 
They went on singing praises, and before you know it, God had the Ammonites and the Moabites kill the Menuhites, and then the Ammonites and the Moabites turned on each other. Church, I'm getting out of your way, but I just stopped by to let you know that as a prepared soldier in the Lord's army in 2023, we need to be ready to gear up and stand. It's been said that sometimes the best offense is a good defense. The scripture tells us to gear up and defend. Defending isn't always going on the offense, but defending is making sure that whatever attack or offense comes your way won't cause you to lose. I know that the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but it never said you won't get hit from time to time. So as a soldier, go ahead and gear up with your belt of truth because that holds everything together. Study God's word for truth and for clarity. After you put on your belt, go ahead and gear up with your breastplate of righteousness. We need to take on Christ's righteousness so we can be like him. Next, we need to cover our feet with the gospel of peace in order to stand firm on God's word. And so the gospel so that you don't lose your footing while fighting in combat. And we need to be able to take the gospel of peace with us wherever we go. Gear up with the shield of faith, knocking down every fiery dart and lie from the enemy. Gear up with the helmet of salvation. Make decisions with a biblical mindset and know the word of God. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And finally, get your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And if you have to attack the enemy, cut through his lies. Use the word of God to let him know it is written and you don't have the victory. Now, once you've geared up, go ahead and stand. You can stand knowing that the trials that we face only come to produce patience. And patience needs to have her perfect work so that we can be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Stand on the promises of God and know that all things are working together for your good. Stand knowing that this race isn't given to the swift nor the battle to the strong. We can stand knowing that one Friday, Jesus went marching all the way to a hill called Calvary. And on Calvary, he had a battle with Satan and with death. On Calvary, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for you and me, he died. The battle has been fought and the victory has already been won because three days later, he got up with all power in his hands. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us victory through Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here this evening who knows they have victory through Jesus Christ? Is there anybody here this evening who's fighting on the battlefield for my Lord. I heard the songwriter say, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. You see, I promised him that I, I'm going to serve him until I die. I am on this battlefield for my Lord. <laughs>